this opportunity to abandon faith-based economics, I think, is obvious to all of us, and I think it's a huge opportunity. Um, so, so I'd rather spend some time thinking about the characteristics of, of this new economic um, that you're calling a life-serving economics, and some thoughts on where our ecological economics um, has been led astray, and ecological economics had great promise, and, and I hope maybe still does have great promise. Um, first, I'll start with a disclaimer. I, I don't really feel like there's anything new about this new economics. I very much feel like it's old wine in a new bottle, maybe. Uh, so maybe the bottle's new, and it, and it looks different, and it, and it feels different, but it, it tastes much like the wine that uh, <laughs> maybe even 18th century uh, economists or moral philosophers were drinking. Um, but we do have the opportunity to uh, reclaim um, both the moral imperative and the biophysical roots of economics. Um, so I'll start there. What might this look like, and, and where is our starting point? Um, I'm taking with a with a quote from Paul Sagan, who said, "If you wish to make an apple pie from scratch, you must first invent the universe." Um, I would suggest really starting there as we envision this new or this not so new economics. Um, starting with the physical laws that define the universe and thus bound the economic system. And of course, I think ecological economics has had great promise and still has great promise in doing just that, describing the economic system as a physical system. And starting with humans as a social primate within this physical system with their own physical traits and behaviors that are grounded in our recent evolution of small groups of, of hunter-gatherers. I think we are also bound uh, physically by our own evolutionary roots. Um, and so I would imagine or reimagine this economics that we're calling for as a life science, uh, to quote Herman Daly from an article in, way back in 1968, again, more things change, I guess, the more they stay the same. Um, I, I would imagine economics as a life science, not as the social science, at least not as currently conceived as the social science. A life science bound by, and, you know, this, this sort of social science model that we have in economics is, is uh, I feel we would all readily agree, is, is bound by an outdated model of human nature, um, in part from that Neva was talking about because economists don't tend to talk to the other disciplines and don't keep current perhaps on, on advances in thinking about humanity and our behaviors. Um, the social science version of economics is not only bound by an outdated model of human nature, but an ideology of humanity at, at the top of the ladder of nature with dominion over the earth. And I, I think that, um, again, as a starting point, is, is quite problematic. Um, so, so Herman in 1968 called for an economic as a life science, and first, of course, Herman was a large part of the growth of an ecological economics in the 70s and 80s. Um, but David challenged us to think about maybe where we went wrong or where we went astray. Um, and, and this is not a critique that's unique just to ecological economics, it's probably a critique that um, you find in common with many other pluralist forms of economics that is trying to be more interdisciplinary. Um, but where we went wrong is, is really treating social sciences as an independent branch of learning versus uh, a social science that's built on a foundation of natural sciences. Uh, treating social sciences as this sort of uh, equal partner or this alternative way of thinking about the world. Um, you know, that, that sort of stood separate from the natural sciences. I think that's the first place where we went wrong and continue to go wrong. Where we went wrong is accepting economics as a legitimate alternative to science-based ways of knowing. And uh, I won't expand because I think uh, Neva did a nice job of, of, of outlining what that is. Um, where we went wrong is, is training psychologists, biologists, and ecologists that think like economists. Um, that is a large part of sort of what most folks, at least from outside the field, think of ecological economics, sort of training others to think like economists and value Earth like economists do and <coughs> put nature in models like economists do. And I, I think that's a huge part of where we went wrong. Instead of exactly the opposite 
uh, way around. Where we went wrong was by allowing economics to infect the broader fields of social sciences, political science, sociology, and even anthropology. Um, I, I think that's been a, a huge uh, detraction in, in social science, particularly as political science has become more and more um, a subfield of economics in many ways. So in closing, um, I would suggest a return to an economics that's closer to its moral philosophy roots, but when bounded by the new discoveries of the moral mind, um, I think we've learned a lot in recent years that our 16th century predecessors could have never imagined. Um, a, a new economics that's bound by new insights on the human animal and, that, and, and, and our attention for cooperation, especially in, in times of, of resource bottlenecks and our ability to create checks and balances, rules, obligations. You know, modern economics strips all this away, yet that's kind of who we are as humans, and that's how we've gotten through past bottlenecks. And ultimately, a new economy of constraint built on a fundamental principles of the conservation of modern energy and ultimately the full fabric of, of life on Earth. Thanks.